Tom Calandra is a founder of CBS Market Watch and FT Market Watch and ranks as one of the most talented financial newsletter writers in the business today. He currently authors the very popular subscriber-based Calandra Report. Tom's track record of identifying valuable investments early on has helped thousands of investors find high return investments for nearly 30 years. We met up with Tom during the 2013 PDAC conference held in Toronto, Canada, and asked for his thoughts on a variety of topics. So how do you go about identifying resource stocks for investment? What factors are the most important in your view? Uh, I tend to be known more as a person with a network, so I, I, uh, I look at the people first, then I go to the project. I, I almost always have to go to a project, like I just got back from Colombia. Two weeks ago I was in Tanzania. You know, two weeks ago, I, uh, before that I was in Colombia, uh, you know, again. Uh, if I don't see the project and I don't believe in it. Now, I'm not a geologist, but I do know a lot of people and, and I do know that there can be upside in, in a project. So if I see fundamental upside, I'll buy an equity and I'll stick with it for a long period of time. That's hurt me in the last two years. I mean, this down, this, uh, this down market, this terrible dumpster market for, for metals equities has been going on now for two years at least, two years this month in March. So it's hurt me, but uh, you know I'm getting a little too old to, to to be trading in and out of stocks, and uh, I'm in it to win it, as they say, and 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 I I think that as long as the people I believe in I I will continue to believe in, you know once in a while somebody falls off the wagon, and they get kicked out, and and I get screwed, or excuse me, <laughs> I get the uh, I get bounced off the wagon too because I followed somebody who's wrong, or. Uh, uh, didn't have the integrity I was hoping or the competence but uh, most times when I stick to my network and I see the project and I like it um, I go for it. Do you believe that the golden age in resource investing has finally come to an end as China has matured into a middle-income country and its appetite for resources is quickly waning? I see gold uh, especially and uh, some other precious metals especially platinum as not even having started their uh, their age. I think if once again if you look at replacement value and if you look at the growth in the world population you'll see that uh, there, there's absolutely no way that the love trade as Frank Holmes would say that the love trade for gold will end. Uh, you can travel anywhere in the world outside of uh, North America uh, for example uh, Istanbul where I was in, uh, in October and November uh, parts of uh, Dubai, Japan China, Hong Kong, on and on and on. And you'll see that people are in love with gold, silver, uh, jewelry. We haven't even talked about the increase in fabrication demand. You know, when gold rises and, uh, and other uh, precious metals especially, uh, most people say that the rise comes from financial demand. And I like to believe that one day the jewelry demand, the fabrication demand for a real uh, for the gold, silver, uh, a platinum, and, and other blending metals that you need for beautiful jewelry will, uh, will create this golden age. Now, as far as other commodities, like I said, I think zinc is going to be uh, a big winner. Uh, it's down in the dumps here. I think nickel is going to be a big winner. It's kind of down in the dumps here. You made some good calls in the past by going after countries like Colombia when it was considered high-risk territory. What countries are you currently finding more favorable for investment? It's interesting that you would mention Colombia because uh, you know there's a lot of debate about Colombia. What happens when markets crash, as the as the metals equities market has crashed these past two years, and even this week of of PDAC, uh, you see people starting to question their fundamental beliefs. You know, uh, for example, at the show, uh, you know, Colombia was hot as a pistol in 2007 when I got there. It was just starting. 2009, 2010, it was roaring, and now it's so crowded, yet so many people believe that uh, the government isn't acting fast enough or that uh, there are going to be problems with, the, uh, with either the administrative process or with the strength of the Colombian peso. Well, and at PDAC, I mean, the Colombia session was practically empty, yet, uh, yet Peru and Mexico are packed. I like it when it's empty. Again, you know, it was empty in 2007 when I went there. There's starting to be some skepticism. That's good. I love Colombia. I love Ghana, but you know, let's face it, Ghana is a, it, Ghana is a, a direct parallel to Colombia. It's the longest-standing democracy in 
Africa, just as Colombia is the longest standing democracy uh, in Latin America. And it is uh, a, a second world nation. I love Tanzania, Tanzania and Ethiopia. They're going to be some of the fast, they will be uh, two of the 10 fastest uh, growers in the economy, in the world, according to the World Bank anyway, in the next 10 years. And uh, you know, I'll tell you, I like places like Portugal. I know you're, this sounds strange, but when you go over there and you see some of the, the companies and the acceptance that they're getting from government uh, officials because of, of these austerity measures, I think there's going to be a big motive, uh, motivation for governments in, uh, in Europe, Western Europe, to let some of these projects, these tungsten projects, gold, silver, run and run and run. What sectors do you currently favor for investment in the junior resource sector? Well, you know, I, there was a time when I used to follow biotechs. I don't, I don't follow biotechs anymore, but they're having a somewhat good run, uh, life sciences. I have to stick uh, to natural resources, mostly gold, silver, platinum, palladium, zinc, nickel, uh, copper, um, uh, I haven't gotten into agricultural that much. Uh, uh, I haven't gotten into iron ore that much. I would like to say that, and I do say this a lot of the times, I don't like to suffer whiplash. Whiplash is when you've stuck with something for so long because you know it. You know it's spot on. You believe it, right? You know the fundamentals. And then at the last second when there's total capitulation, everybody's throwing in the towel, you throw in the towel. And then you get whiplash, right? It's like, whoa, I've suffered whiplash way too many times in my life. And now that I'm in my mid-50s and I've had a good 30 years of investing, I, I do know that, uh, I'm gonna, that when you stick with something, as long as you do your homework and you're out there working as hard as you can, it will come back. And I think the up cycle has to, almost has to start again this year for those commodities. Do you have some favorite stocks that you can share with our viewers? You know, in, in uh, the Calandra report that uh, we restarted last year and, um, you know, has quite a few subscribers now. I'm, I'm surprised that people still remember me, but uh, we have seven that we actually follow. And I do, uh, I, I do take a place in these companies right alongside it. I find that 80% of, of, of the folks out there prefer that you be in, uh, in it with them, right? They get a sense of uh, uh, who knows. <laughs> camaraderie and they love seeing these projects. I love cult, cult resources in Colombia and by the way I, I meet with management regularly and I go see the projects regularly and uh, 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 I'd say five of the seven are, uh, are probably uh, even or just above. Two are getting uh, shellacked <laughs> just like everything else in this market. Love cult resources, GTP uh, in Portugal for the tungsten and gold. I, uh, I, I do have to say um, I, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about Seafield Resources. It's dirt cheap. It's in Colombia. Uh, SFF on the uh, venture. I like the fact that there's new management and that they're going to have a, uh, a preliminary, uh, uh, a, uh, a revised resource report for Quinchia. You know, I like a lot of things in Colombia. I love uh, uh, Sol Vista, and I've held on to my shares. You know, we watched this, these shares go up from 20 cents to a dollar when they printed when they printed their spectacular uh, drill assays and here we are again now they have drill assays and the stock's back at a price uh, of 40 cents which is when they didn't have any drill assays so there's no logic to any of this stuff so Silvista is kind of is a fantastic company they have two projects in Colombia you know if I, if I had to pick one that's kind of uh, intense speculative like very intense speculative that's not one of the seven uh, and uh, it's a, uh, it's a kind of a prospect generator, uh, Golden Valley Resources in Quebec. You know, they own a ton of property and have a ton of companies in their portfolio that they've joint ventured with. They're on the Abitibi Gold Belt, uh, GZZ or GZZ. Um, you know, they, they own parts of companies that have joint ventures with so Cisco, for example, in the Abitibi at Val d'Or, at Malarctic. So, uh, you know, I think that gives you a little bit of a, a selection. They're all pretty much high risk. I own them all. To get more great interviews with our experts, be sure to check the Education tab on smallcappower.com and be the first to know by subscribing to our daily newsletter.